It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And my friend asked me to make her some macarons. And I decided, oh, I'm gonna make her some macarons. But I'm going to make her, I think I'm gonna make about six or seven different flavors, or I'm at least going to try. Now, if you've ever made macarons before, you know that coloring them is one of the biggest issues with that. It's really, really hard to do. It's not just like coloring batters or icings. So today I'm going to be showing you my whole process of how to make approximately 250 macarons with varying flavors and colors. And the first obstacle is, is that there was no almond flour at the store. So I'm going to show you how to make that. So let's get into it. So these are all of the ingredients that I purchased and I did actually buy an extra bag of almonds. I didn't need the full one kilogram extra. So I did spend around $100 on supplies. So I know that there are a lot of different ways and theories of how to make the most perfect macaron. And one of them is aging your egg whites. Now I used to do this religiously and age them for the seven days that was recommended to me, but now I just use fresh egg whites or if they're a day or two old because I've been saving them from something else, then I will use them as well. I ended up using approximately 36 egg whites for this whole recipe, all the macaron shells and the buttercreams included. And wow, I did not expect these containers to get filled to the brim, but I guess I was lucky because it did fit. All right, now we talked about that almond flour problem that I had. This is actually probably the cheaper way to do this anyway. For a whole one kilogram bag of this, it was $20. And if I'm being honest, this was actually really, really easy. I've tried doing this before in my magic bullet, which was just a huge disaster. So don't do that if you're gonna make your own almond flour, definitely use a big food processor. Here is some almond flour that I purchased previously, which obviously is not enough for all of these macarons. So I'm just making sure that it matches the consistency that I created. Now, one little warning is you don't wanna go too far with processing that or else you're gonna release too much oil and it's going to become like a paste. You can do this with whole almonds as well, and really you can use any nut you want to create your own flowers. Just keep in mind that some of that skin of the nut will show up in the flower as well. Once the almond flour was created, it was time to get started on actually making the macaron batter. Now the trickiest part about this whole thing is I wanted to make multiple flavors and multiple colors. So in doing so, I really need to weigh everything super, super carefully. There's actually a lot of math and planning that goes into this. So I had to make sure that I chose a color palette that was conducive to only four batches of macaron batter. I planned this out so I would make eight different colors. Now in doing so, that means I needed to split all of the almond flour and all of the icing sugar in half. Now it is completely plausible to get three colors or even four colors out of one batch, but it gets really, really tricky just to make sure that everything is nice and even. Because when we cut down this recipe more and more and more, it makes that process of when you're actually mixing the batter really, really tricky. So I decided to just leave it at two colors per batch. Now for expediency's sake, right now I only have four large bowls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split those bowls in half now. Also, my particular recipe uses kind of this egg white trick. So I have to make sure that I get the egg whites evenly dispersed as well. This is when I really planned meticulously which colors I was going to put in which bowls. The larger bowls I'll need for actual mixing. Those smaller bowls there, I can't mix in. So I will show you in just a little bit what I mean. Now, if you've watched any of my macaron videos before, you know I can't actually share this particular recipe because I purchased it and I bought it from a class, but I will link down in the description box below a similar recipe. As you guys know, I love making Italian meringue and I find that the Italian meringue method works the best for me when it comes to macarons. Very reliable and it doesn't rely on the weather at all. Now I will say that not all of my macarons baked evenly this time, but the reason being is because I misplaced one of my really, really good quality heavy duty pans that makes sure that everything bakes really, really evenly. And because of that, it was really, really challenging. So I had to kind of work off that other pan. Now that other silver pan that I was using is fine when it has the pro mat on it, but I only have one pro mat. And this is a very long rest recipe. So unfortunately, some of my macarons did not bake up as evenly as I would have liked them to. However, in all honesty, after I bit into one of these, they taste the exact same. It's just we as macaron makers don't like it when it doesn't have that super, super nice smooth finish on the bottom. 
Now back to talking about all of those colors. So as you saw there, I started with a light pink, then I worked my way up to a bit of a darker pinky purple color, and now I have this blue color and I'm mixing it together. So I really made sure that each bowl, the big one and the small one, matched up with each other in some way so that I can avoid cleaning out all of those different bowls in between. To pipe out all of these macaron shells already took me a couple hours, so I decided to take a little bit of a break. Had some Vietnamese takeout, so, so delicious. If you've never had a banh mi, highly suggest that you go and have one. All right, back to the macaron making. So as you can see with the Pro Mat, really, really nice finish underneath. I haven't made macarons in bulk in a really long time, so this actually showed me that I just want to invest in a ton of different pro mats, and then I can get more of those baking pans as well, and then I will get even baking underneath every single time. It was just such a nice finish, and they baked up so well. This is a great lesson in just that you need the right stuff in order to get the results that you want, because I literally did the exact same thing for all of the other macarons, but some of them just look a little bit different. Luckily, this is just for a friend, so I'm really not being too picky about this at all. Now you'll notice that the camera is switching back and forth fairly erratically, I must say, but the reason being is because during this portion of time is when it's crunch time. I'm baking things, pulling things out of the oven, making sure that I'm letting those macarons rest for a sufficient amount of time. And then, of course, we've got the dreaded dishes. So I'm trying to clean at the same time as I'm letting these macarons fully cool on their baking sheet, taking them off. It is such a process. During this couple hours or so, you're really just moving and moving, especially when you're making so many. I had multiple timers set for the rest time and for the bake time and then for how long they've been cooling. And this happens because I only have a few good pans to work with. So obviously the more pans you have to work with, the less moving around of things you have to do. But honestly, if you're baking at your house or if you're just baking for fun, you're not going to have a ton, a ton of pans. So you do really have to make sure that you're like a well-oiled machine because if you do mess up that timing, you could end up burning your macarons. I was really doing a lot of self-reflection as I was completing all of this stuff. And I really realized that it was the movement of things, moving things and making things fit and having enough space. That's what really, really slows this whole process down. All right, guys. So I have been baking from about 2.30ish in the afternoon. And right now it is 10.57. That sound is the final pan of macaron shells. So I think I am going to take a little rest and then I will do the fillings tomorrow. All right, so we made it to the next day and I'm going to be using all of these different oils in all of the buttercream. But first, of course, I'm going to start by making all of my compotes and the things that are going to go in the center of the buttercream. Now, not all of the macarons are going to have a special filling on the inside, but all of them will have a nice flavored buttercream. You'll notice that I did not flavor the shells. I find that flavoring the shells just takes up even that much more time and that much more planning. So I find it's just better to do a plain shell and have all of these different flavors. Flavors. Now, at this point, I foolishly thought that this was only going to take me maybe one to two hours. Uh, no, it took me a lot longer. It's funny how I have forgotten how long things actually take, even though it wasn't that long ago when I've done something like this. But you do quickly forget. Now, this isn't really a full-on tutorial, so I'm not explaining exactly all of the ingredients and things that I'm using. However, I will be putting out a video very soon after this one that's going to show you how I made the fillings and what I think of all of those different oils that I used. Now, because of my lack of room and my lack of space, I must say that my filling process was not the most efficient. What I should have actually done is made sure that I matched all of the shells together, flipped them over, did one part of the process, for example, do the outline of buttercream first, and then fill. I find that when you do it in more of a factory setup, you're bound to get things done a lot faster. For some reason, though, I was just doing things all out of order. I was probably just tired still from making the shells from the night before. These ones are lemonade flavors, so they have a nice ring of that lemonade buttercream and then inside is some lemon curd. I really wanted to make these fun and different looking, so I did add a lot of sprinkles to all of these macarons. I know a lot of people just like to leave the macarons plain and they do look really pretty and elegant that way as well. I just thought I'd add a little something extra. 
These particular ones are mango peach, so I tried to make sure that I chose colors that would reflect the flavors. After finishing each flavor, I do like to put them on a flat tray and then place these in my fridge. The reason that I place them in the fridge and not the freezer right away is because my freezer, I have to kind of dip the boxes in and they can't just lay flat. So I do want everything to solidify up just a little bit. So by placing it in the fridge, I make sure to avoid any slippage because some of that buttercream is a little bit fluffy, so it can slip. And if you're working in a really hot environment, you will want to place this in the fridge first and then transfer to a different container and put them in the freezer. This was definitely at the point where I felt like I can't believe there are more macarons to fill. How many of you guys have been in that situation where you've looked at a project and you think it's not going to take you that long, but then you've been at it for an extra two more hours than you thought you would be at? Aesthetics wise, I would have to say that the cotton candy ones were my favorite. I really, really love the nonpareils on the side and on the top, and I love that color of pink and blue. These would be perfect if you're into gender reveal parties. These particular macarons are the only ones that I did not put a special oil into. These were just classic vanilla. And I don't know why I chose blue for classic vanilla. I think it must be because the bakery that I used to work at always uses blue for their vanilla flavors, so it just stuck with me. And I must say that this particular one was colored with fawn dust, and I didn't mix it all the way in because I wanted kind of that marbly looking texture. This one here was hands down my favorite flavor. I added in these scorbits to the side, so, so delicious. And it really gives you a super puffy looking macaron to fit in all of those little caramel bits on the side. If you guys have watched my video about the different stages of cooking, this is very, very similar where I was feeling like, yeah, I want to stop. But then by the time I got to this final flavor, I was like, nope, I'm good. But of course, after this, I had lots of cleanup to do as well. I think whenever bakers are setting up photos or they're doing things, there's a lot of cleanup that is involved and a lot of moving around of things that we don't often think about. But because I'm always looking for that beauty shot at the end, there is a lot of cleanup to do. And there you have it. By the end of this, I think I made around 300 macarons. So, so satisfying to look at all of your work. And this isn't even all of the macarons. I just chose a few to set up here. Really, really love looking at all of the beautiful colors. Let me know down in the description box below which color is your favorite. Now let's get into the pricing of these macarons. Now there is a little bit of a range for these macarons, reason being is because if you want a specific color or if you want more than one color per batch, it is going to be more expensive. For stock orders, of course, there are no minimums and they are a little bit cheaper. So for those of you that are curious and you're a numbers person, this took me around 12 hours to complete from start to finish, including all of the cleaning. And one of the parts that does take a long time that we often don't think about is actually putting these into containers, letting them set, and then putting them into the freezer. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!